Let's talk about Marfan syndrome. We include Marfan syndrome in this discussion of diseases of connective tissue because it provides an opportunity to look at diseases affecting a component of the extracellular matrix whose clinical manifestations do not primarily affect bone strength, as an OI, osteogenesis imperfecta, but rather presents with long, thin extremities, dislocated lenses, and most importantly, aortic aneurysms and aortic dissection. Further recent work on the pathogenesis of Marfan syndrome suggests that in addition to disordered formation of the microfibril matrix because of mutation in fibrillin 1, there's evidence for involvement of TGF beta, a powerful growth factor that plays a vital role in morphogenesis, embryonic development, and wound healing. Most pertinent to Marfan syndrome, the TGF beta signaling pathway has been shown to influence vascular cell proliferation, migration, arteriogenesis, and cardiac development. This is clearly a new paradigm for the development of the clinical abnormalities in Marfan syndrome, pointing to an abnormal structural protein and abnormal morphogenetic signaling. We begin by describing the clinical features of Marfan syndrome and conclude by looking at the roles of fibrillin 1 and TGF beta in the pathogenesis of this syndrome. First, the clinical features. Marfan syndrome was described over 100 years ago. The diagnosis of Marfan syndrome is largely a clinical one and includes aortic root dilation, dilatation, and dissection. Ectopia lentis, swelling of the dura surrounding the lumbar vertebra and skeletal features. Among the skeletal features are pectus excavatum and pectus carinatum. This appropriately long arms, legs, and digits, which is known as arachnodactyly, with a reddened, reduced upper to lower segment ratio and scoliosis. Ocular changes include upward displacement of the lens, which is known as ectopia lentis, which is present in 50 to 60 percent of patients. This usually requires slit lamp examination. The cornea is often flatter and normal, and the globe is elongated. Refractive errors in young children, if not corrected, can lead to amblopia. Retinal detachment also occurs. As for cardiovascular changes, where mitral valve prolapse occurs in approximately 25% of patients, it is dilatation of the proximal portion of the aorta with possible dissection that represents the most dangerous aspect of cardiovascular involvement. Pulmonary manifestations include spontaneous pneumothorax from rupture of a bleb of the apex of the lung, which occurs in 4 to 5% of patients, and occasional patient developments restrictive lung disease because of chest abnormalities. Let's talk about the diagnos diagnosis now. In a patient with a family history of Marfan syndrome who manifests ectopia lentis, aortic dilatation, long, thin extremities, and chest deformity, the diagnosis of Marfan syndrome is quite likely. It is important to rule out homocystinuria caused by cystothionine uh, beta synthase deficiency if the only manifestation is dislocated lenses. Molecular defects. The defect in Marfan syndrome is synthesis of abnormal fibrillin 1, a 350KD8 glycoprotein that is a major component of elastin associated microfibrils. These microfibrils are found in all organs involved in Marfan syndrome. Like OI, it has been assumed that all of the manifestations of Marfan syndrome could be explained by mutations in a key structural protein of connective tissue. But recently, evidence has begun to accumulate that shows fibrillin 1 modulates the action of TGF beta by sequestering latent TGF beta. Support for the role of TGF beta comes from two key observations. First, a rare disorder, Loy's date syndrome is associated with a defect in TGF beta and not a mutation in fibrillin 1. This syndrome has cardiovascular and skeletal manifestations similar to those in MFS. This uh, Marfan syndrome. This lends further support to the role of TGF beta as the final common pathway for abnormalities in both of these syndromes. 
Second, a, in a mouse model of Marfan syndrome generated by mutations of, of the mouse fibrillin 1 gene, treatment with antibodies to TGF beta prevents adverse anatomic changes to the aorta. Human trials with antibodies to TGF beta are underway and thus far results and thus far results are encouraging. Further, the angiotensin receptor blocking agent Losartan has been shown to ameliorate these adverse cardiovascular effects in animals, and a clinical trial is underway to determine if Losartan can forestall development of significant aortic dilatation. Finally, on to treatment. Measures to lower blood pressure have been used to delay or prevent the development of aortic dilatation. In the past, beta blockers have been used, but as noted above, uh, losartan has been studied as a possible replacement for propanolol. It has been known for some time that losartan and similar drugs reduce the long-term remodeling of heart and blood vessels in essential hypertension and other disorders associated with stress on vessel walls, such as aortic stenosis. Prophylactic surgical repair of the aortic root with a graft has been life-saving. Surgery also plays a role in the treatment of skeletal and ocular defects.